So Operation Champions might not be the most expansive update we've had with Infinite, but might be one of the most fun ones. But it certainly comes with its own problems. So let's go through this update one section at a time. I'll give you my thoughts and opinions and everything because some parts of it is fantastic, some of it definitely could use some improvements, and some of it are just kind of eh. Like for one thing that's eh is, well, this uh, this uh, battle pass here, or operation pass, whatever you want to call it. Uh, because even though, yes, you do get this battle rifle, which if you pay 500 credits to make it a permanent operation pass, from what I've seen uh, in person in gameplay wise, it's like a battle rifle trying to look like a DMR from Halo Reach. And looking at it in first person, you kind of see what I was talking about. It's a battle rifle trying to look like a Halo Reach DMR. And while it looks great, I like the variation of it, it just doesn't stand out enough for me to want to spend the 500 credits to be able to earn this. I also want to say if you guys like these kind of analytical videos, review videos, kind of going into these different updates, make sure you tap like and subscribe. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. Well, let's get right into this whole thing. You also do get this coding with the purchase right, right here. Um, but again, like it's kind of a decent coding. Nothing that really stands out. It makes you like go like, oh my god, I need this kind of thing. But you just look at the rest of the Operation Pass here, and again, you get like an emblem, you get the coins, you get some pretty decent armor set, but this armor set really does look like an armor set that should have been part of that Banished season that we were supposed to get. You can just tell that it was supposed to happen, but it got chopped up into Operations and Store bundles, sadly. But this is where we are right now when it comes to Halo Info. But this armor set, you can see right here, looks pretty good like and the shoulder pads are kind of meh um and the helmet is also kind of meh as well but you can definitely tell it's supposed to be very much banished theme when it comes to possibly like a banished season but it looks pretty good now you have to talk about this with every new halo of an update because we want them to change this aspect of halo of it so much but it's probably just never going to really change in a, the best way possible for the players and that is the shop right here and the worst part about this is that 343 brought back the classic achilles armor set from halo 5 that people th thirsted over trolled people over for months to be able to earn this and now it's just thrown into the shop for 1800 credits aka 18 dollars in the us and even though this armor set does look absolutely incredible it just stings to know that there will be no way for someone like me to just play the game and earn an awesome armor set like this. It seems like all the good stuff seems to be just kind of thrown into the shop, sadly, which is just like, it's such a painful thing to see when it comes to the customization in Halo. And like, even if this was mainly a shop item, right? But the one thing is that you don't have the ability to actually grind out the game to unlock these kind of things. I feel like that's what the compromise of the exchange was kind of supposed to be giving players an ability to unlock customization that you would think you'd want to unlock like this, like this amazing, the Myth Mythic Magister, if that's how you pronounce it, uh, armor set. It looks absolutely incredible. I want this. I want to customize my character with this. It looks so freaking cool. But the problem is, I'm not about to drop 2,200 credits for this kind of stuff, even though like the weapon model looks crazy unique and awesome. The, arm, the weapon code, I mean, sorry, the armor coding looks really cool as well. But dude, I'm just not about to drop $2,200 on, $22 on this. Same thing with this champion bundle that came in as well. Like we also have the previous champion bundles from the 22 season and the 23 season. The 24 season bundle definitely takes a cake as the most awesome one out there. But again, it's tied behind the shop. You can't grind for it. You can't get the individual parts of it. Like if you just wanted this weapon model for maybe 500 credits or something like that. Sorry, you can't do that. Again, this has been just a continuous pain point within Halo that we just know that it's not going to get any better. This is what this is going to be. This is what the shop is always going to be. It's going to be the main driver for why Halo of it is still running. But I mean, it's a free to play shooter out there. So it needs to run off of microtransactions. And so I was talking about earlier about how being able to unlock stuff within the game, but unlock customization by just playing the game. That's where the exchange comes in right here. But again, like if you've been someone like me who's played a lot of Halo Infinite, I think I currently have right around 900 hours put into this game, uh, especially the, during the seasons, I was grinding this game big time. I already pretty much have all the exchange customization I'd want besides this, uh, the Ghost of Reach helmet, which I'm slowly working my way towards right now at the moment. 
Again, another great compromise by 343 to be able to earn sparring points by just keep continually playing the game, right? If you go in over here into the uh, challenge system, that, uh, each game you play, you earn 100 sparring points, which is fantastic. And if you complete all your weekly challenges, you get, oops, sorry, wrong screen right here. You get 1,000 sparring points as well for the grind out there, which gaining 75,000 uh, points out there, it's a grind. So now I've showed you the meh, I've showed you the not so great, <laughs> and some of the uh, downright saddening parts when it comes to Achilles being tied behind the shop. But the best thing about this entire update, the thing that actually makes it stand out the most, is the multiplayer editions of Firefight. And I think it's something that is greatly needed when it comes to the multiplayer experience of Halo Infinite. This Battle of Four Reach Firefight playlist is a ton of fun. Right now it is very easy. And actually is a great way to grind out XP and you know pass points if you want to try to do that. Uh, but it comes with Got Gyre Fight, if I learned how to pronounce that correctly. Powerhouse. Ardent Pyre, which, which is a phenomenal map, by the way. Every Firefight map should be this map moving forward. You get the re reuse of Refuge as well. Courtyard was a really great addition in there. And Lone Wolf, I mean, like, come on, it's it's Reach, man. I love the theme of this. It gets you excited to play off of that nostalgia and also it helps refresh a playlist that has been very stale for quite some time, pretty much since the launch of it, honestly. But like I was talking about earlier, Ardent Prayer. This map in particular is awesome. I'll show some gameplay up on the stream from uh, the stream that we did earlier tonight from uh, recording this video. This is a linear King of the Hill map. Even though these are all King of the Hill maps, this one is linear, meaning that you go to a hill, you capture that, then a new hill spawns up in a different location on the map. You go there to capture that hill and moves on to the next section of the map. So it's almost like you're kind of progressing through it like a campaign mission like they mentioned within the blog update about this map that it makes it so much more enjoyable so much more engaging because you're not just kind of standing around and just kind of shooting the same enemies over and over again you are shooting a lot of the same enemies but in new environments constantly changing because you're progressing through the map and the way that's designed and playing off the nostalgia of the maps like you first jump in the first section is zealot from halo reach which is awesome then you go into the classic firefight map and then you go into one of the parts that was part of the campaign to go into that control room. Uh, you go into that section and you go back to the fire, classic firefight section. Like it's it's a journey and I love that. Making this linear just makes it so much more engaging. It reminds me of why I love Escape from the Underground, which is like a variation of zombies that was got popular back in Halo 5. I'm not a big zombies guy. I'm not a fan of the mode. I never really enjoyed it too much beyond like the classic Halo 2 days. And but matchmaking zombies, I've just never really been a fan of. Feels like kind of boring. You just kind of stand around and then eventually you just have a silent zombie come up and slash you. Not the most fun experience. But the escape the from the underground version is so much better because it tells a story while you're playing the game, right? It has your highs and lows when it comes to playing because oftentimes when it comes to escape from the underground, you gotta run to the end of a section of the map, the doors close, you gotta get there in time before the zombies get you. It creates that tension, that excitement. It's really fun and it's so much more engaging than just kind of standing around and just killing people who don't know how to play as a zombie. And that's where this map Ardent Prayer comes in and I'm like, dude, this map is freaking awesome. And apparently it's just one dude, like that gets credited just the one guy. I'm like, how the heck does one person make such an amazing map? I don't know, but I'm so glad that they did. And this update, honestly, is probably the best update we've had in Halo Infinite in the last like six months because the most notable update I can look back in the previous operation updates we've had with Infinite Probably the Cyber Showdown update, even though that wasn't the craziest one, but it brought Husky Raid, which is a fan favorite mode and like a completely different gameplay experience than you would normally have by just playing regular Halo. Think about that, and if you go into the future a little bit more, right, with the Yappening 2, it just kind of came with like a, the what Yappening 1 was just like. I mean, you did get a new map, but you're just playing 4v4 Slayer again on this map. You got a Grunt Pocalypse play this, but then like, this gets super old really fast because the grunts aren't really that engaging to kind of fight against. Uh, so it's kind of just real meh, really, for the most part. Same thing with the Banish Honor uh, operation that we have right here as well, where like the main thing was like, so, you know, sandbox operation up, you know, sandbox tuning updates, Forge Pilot updates, and more. And you got like the Exchange and like BTB Heavy's got an update in addition, but it's like, 
you're just playing big team battle again but just some new maps and more vehicles like we've been playing previously within halo for many many years and then you go over three months ago for the 10 right four operation and what did this bring for us guys like again another operation pass you got the match composer which is kind of a confusing op system uh juggernaut was like the big cool thing to play within the game but again you're just playing 4v4 slayer in a game mode that's been in halo for decades now at this point to finally come back in the game is kind of wild like yeah we did get like the 10 ray map playlist which gives you something new to play which is great uh but again it's like playing replaying 4v4 slayer type modes over and over and over again you know same thing with operation anvil like it was nice a nice little addition and change there as well the armor set was really cool uh central defense again was a great mode uh but again you're just playing big team battle with a slightly different objective and also on a new map which was great wasn't maybe the most visually interesting map but it definitely played like a very classic halo map a lot of really interesting routes you could take on this map in particular to make it move more just like how you would in like a classic halo 2 halo 3 style map but also have like your typical routes as well fleetcom i mean like I was already checked out before this operation update ever ever went live. I mean, uh, it brought what VIP a mode that was back in Halo 3 back in 2007. Like that wasn't that crazy of a mode. And the Headhunter was fun. I played it for a night, uh, and you know it's a mode that launched with Reach back in 2010, 14 years ago to finally come back. I mean, it's great that it was there, but not really a a gameplay experience that makes me want to jump back in and play. Because then again, you're just playing. 4v4 slayer with vip you're just playing regular free for all and free for all has always been an underperforming mode when it comes to uh halo infinite engagement overall and so it's one of those things where it's like yeah you can make a new free for all mode but no one's really going to want to play it and that's why this update in particular with champions even though it's labeled champions is much more like the halo reach firefight update it's so much more enjoyable the emphasis off your typical pvp experience that they've been focused on for the longest time and also plays on nostalgia it almost acts like a map pack really of being halo reach style content but not only that it does vary up the king of the hill gameplay aspect of it again with the linear firefight map of art and prayer but also on the map of gyre fight you have the ordinance drop from reach back in the game as like a weapon you can pick up and throw down I jumped in and played around with it. It was a ton of fun. I mean, it wasn't really that most effective thing. Maybe just because it was on an easier difficulty, but it was still like a great way to mix up the gameplay element to give you like that power trip while you're playing Halo Infinite, which is something we've been struggling with for quite some time. It just feels great to have an update on Halo Infinite that doesn't focus so much on PvP experiences. Just casual, jump in, blow some stuff up, and have some fun. And you don't have to worry about the terrors of skill-based matchmaking, because you can find matches super quick in it as well. You just constantly keep playing. It's a great way to grind XP, hang out with the boys and the grills and people that you like, and also just have fun with Halo in a very fun social way, which is something I think has been missing from the Halo Infinite experience for the longest time. If you guys made it this far in the video, I greatly appreciate it. If you want to know who the real ones are in the comments, leave a green heart. Let me know who you guys made it this far into the video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure I earned your like and a subscribe. And stay up to date with more Halo stuff. Make sure you catch up with the next video. Peace out.